Hey guys, uh, so in this video I'm going to show you how we can work with the Fitbit API in Python. Um, so before I was showing you how we could use uh, the Fitbit API with Strava, or not Strava, with um, Postman to make requests. Um, this time I'm going to show you how to do it in Python, and instead of using the OAuth2 um, authorization code grant flow, which is what we used before, I didn't even realize they had a simpler workflow. So they have three different ways you can um, work with the API. This authorization code grant flow, which that's what we did in the first two videos. It was kind of confusing and we had to get an access token and a refresh token. They have that method. They have this, which is I think an even more secure method of the first one. And then they have this implicit grant flow. This is probably the most, um, the, the least secure. Um, but it's best for uh, how easy it is to use and especially if we're just working on developing this like for a personal project or we're just using our uh, we're just experimenting at home this is what we want to use because it's just going to be a lot easier um, so you can see there's three steps here we redirect the user to fitbit authorization page and then we're going to get that pop-up where the user has to say like allow and then it's going to redirect us and in the url of that redirect we're going to uh, see a token and once we have that token we'll be able to use that token in python to make requests um, so let me show you what i'm talking about if i go to this authorization page and we're going to use the implicit grant flow um, right we already have our type set to client in our app so let me show you what i'm talking about so if we go back to our app, just make sure that, where is it? Just, I'm going to show you if we edit it. Just make sure it's set to client or personal here. Okay. Um, so here's, it's saying this is step one. We need to make this request and it's giving us all this information here. So there's really three things or four things required. So if I go down, here is... Here are the actual examples. So that's the authorization code grant flow. We want this implicit grant flow. So let's double click that. And I'm gonna open up Notepad++. So now we just need to fill in um, our information. So client ID, I'm gonna fill in with my client ID. very carefully response type token client ID redirect you are make sure this says localhost or wherever you have it um, going to and you can it's kind of hard to see but you can tell where it breaks by where these and signs are so that's this is what we need redirect URL so we need to go all the way up to where there's another and so right there and for me, it's HTTP local host. And this just means when I send this URL, it's going to send the response back to my local host or my local computer. Um, let's see, that might be it. Everything else is just more information about what we want returned. So nutrition, heart rate, location, profile data, sleep, all that stuff. And this expires. So this is how long this token is gonna last. That is in seconds. And that is uh, a week, I believe. So if we go back to these docs, it, it does say somewhere um, how long it's good for. Here it is. Here we go. I guess we can do one year. Let's do that. That way we won't have to do, won't have to do this headache again. So, oops. Let's just set it equal to a year. Because I hate messing around with this stuff it, it takes away from the fun of it um okay i think that is good so again just make sure you've put in your client id the local host wait does that make sense yeah i guess all right so i'm going to bring it in here and paste and just click enter all right Invalid client ID. Let me take a closer look at at this. 
I'm just going to paste in their example again. Let me look at my client ID. Yeah, I copied it wrong. I kept the C there from their example. I should have got rid of that. So that's what we want. So instead, let me just get rid of that C and copy this. Hmm. All right, so you see it's trying to do something. Huh, so it actually just returned an access token for me up here. And I think this might be because I've been doing this earlier today. I think the first time you do this, you should see uh, a prompt that'll say that you want to, you want to like let this app allow. I'm trying to find a picture, this. You should see this the first time. And then when you click allow, it should bring you to this. So cool, now we have an access token here that's good for apparently a year. So just copy this, and it, it's kind of hard to see where it starts and ends, but it ends where there's a like that amper stand. So just copy that, and I'm gonna put it in my notes. Actually, I'm gonna bring it into Python. So I was working with this earlier. So it should be this, no, it's slightly different here. EYJ. Yeah, I guess it's end user ID. Oh, we don't need this. Let me make sure I didn't copy this wrong. It looks right. So I guess because I requested one for uh, a year, it, I guess, generated a new one. So this is old. We don't need that. So just um, here we are in Python and I've just imported requests and I have some comments in here saying this is the implicit grant flow and we get this token from doing that request in the browser. So now we have our token. So all we really need to do is um, provide it with this information, access token, uh, put this in the headers. Let me see if I can find this in the documentation. Uh, authorization page. I'm looking for like a section for requests. Here we go, making requests. So, This is what we're going to do. So you can see here, simply add an authorization header to the HTTP request with the user's access token. So this is all we need to do. That is what we're requesting and this is what's gonna be in the headers. So that's what I've done in Python here. This is how you can uh, basically make a dictionary and set it as this is the header information. So that it's a key and a value. So the key is authorization and the value is bearer and our access token goes in there. So then in order to run that, you just say request.get and uh, throw in the headers right here. And the .json just returns it in JSON. So if I just print response, with any luck, we should, actually let's print response. Yeah, since we have it in JSON, we can just print response. So there you go. We have my information, my age, um, so this is a dictionary, and then within that dictionary, there's another dictionary. So now let's print, um, oops, response. Why is it doing that? Response, um, user. Okay, so now we have a dictionary. So we could loop through this. So, key value in response dot user dot items, I believe. 
Um, so let's just print the key. Print the value. And I'm just going to print um, a blank line just so it's not all jumbled up together. So let me try this. And there we go. We have all this information uh, coming back from the API. So that's what I wanted to show you. And I guess this is this token is going to be good for a year, which is awesome. So we don't have to go through that again. Um, the OAuth two, like the other method, it's really for if you're developing like a a big application that is running on a server and you actually have users. Um, but but I feel like a lot of uh, you know when I was first doing this, I just wanted to get this working for myself so I could play with the data. Um, and you know you can do a ton of stuff with with all this data. And what I showed you just here was just the profile endpoint, but there's other endpoints too. And I think I showed showed you guys that in the other videos. Um, yeah, hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if you'd like to see anything more with Python in the Fitbit API. I did notice that they have this um, Python Fitbit API. So right here, this uh, Python Fitbit this is just um, like a third party module that somebody made um, for working with the Fitbit API. I haven't tried this yet, um, but it might be worth looking into if there's something that we can't do with what we've already worked with. But this is just keeping it simple, um, not using any outside packages or anything. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.